Hello, I am Ryan and this is my bread and butter, adventure and dual sport tires. <laughs> Of course I'm going to include the one that took me all over Quebec last season, Bridgestone's Battlewing 502. And Bridgestone calls this a 90% on-road, 10% off-road tire, but to be honest, I think they're selling themselves short. This is as close to an 80-20 tire as I've seen. The Battlewing is a radial, which is awesome for those adventure bikes that don't play too nice with bias plies. And the other thing is you get a little bit more street prowess with the radio. The turn-in is quick and agile, and the cornering grip is more than enough to drag foot pegs. I also found the tread pattern to be totally quiet and smooth. I've done many 13, 14, 15 hour days on the battle wings, and to be honest, they were just about as good as a purpose-built touring tire. They last almost as long too. I pretty much consider fishtailing to be my other hobby, and I still got just about 15,000 kilometers off the rear. Where I was really impressed with the BW502s though, was off-road. Gravel and hard pack was no problem. They dance around on rocky terrain a little more than I'd like, but in the sand, they're surprisingly decent. You'd expect nothing from looking at this tread pattern, but these little guys actually gave me enough traction to push that fat V-strom up a few little dunes, so I was blown away. Until it rained. The grooves are way too narrow and shallow to evacuate mud, so it's basically a nightmare on soggy trails. I found my way into an asbestos mine last year, in the rain, and it was just a nightmare. I mean, it caked up and just never released. Anyway, the wet weather problems are limited to off-roading, and so for an 80-20 tire, it's a forgivable sin. Fitment-wise, the BW502 goes great on some of the larger adventure touring bikes. Uh, R1200 GS, V-Strom 1000, Yamaha Super 10, stuff like that. There are actually a couple tailor-made specs of this tire that are specifically made for those motorcycles. Now for something a little bit more dirt-worthy. I picked the Shinko 700 Series Dual Sport Tire. I would label this probably 60% on-road, 40% off-road. A lot of riders shy away from Shinko because they're cheap, but honestly, there's nothing sinister going on here. The company started making bicycle tires in Japan after World War II. And then they bought the rubber and the molds from Yokohama a few years back, and now they're making over 200,000 motorcycle tires a month in South Korea. It's a legit operation with big time quality. Back to the 700 series, I would say that Shinko took the same approach as the TKC80 here. They have individual knobs for off-road traction, but they're low and thick enough for decent behavior on the pavement. I love that the outer tread knobs are connected to the inner ones via these little reinforcement bands. That helps when you're cornering on the streets, because the tread knob here isn't going to fold under and cause a low side crash. My opinion of this tire is that if you want to carve up the pavement, the 700 series is probably a bad choice. Yes, it is a 60% road use tire, but look at the profile. You see how flat it is up here? And this tire is designed to get you good mileage on the road, but not good performance. It's ideal for someone who gently tours on the pavement and then rides a little bit more aggressively on the dirt, not the other way around. My other opinion of this tire is that it works great on smaller capacity dual sport bikes. CRF 250L, KLR 650, maybe up to an F800 GS, but not much more than that. And the reason I say that is because the speed and load capacities are low. The limit is either 150 or 180 kilometers an hour, depending on the model you choose. And for weight, the limit ranges from 195 kilos to 307 kilos. But hey, if your motorcycle works below those ceilings, then this is your lucky day, because the 700 series offers a truly incredible value for money. This beautiful piece of German craftsmanship is called the Heidenau K60 Scout, and I will rave about this tire to anyone who listens. It's like a magic trick. 50% off-road, 50% on-road, 100% capable at both. Most of this tire's ability is thanks to its chevron tread pattern. See down the center strip, we have this continuous band of rubber here. So it rolls as smooth as any street tire on the highways, and it lasts about as long on the straightaways as well. We also have a lot of contact surface on the edges, which is great for carving up the twisties. Since the chevron's maximized surface area, this tire can afford to have really wide grooves. So it hooks up well in the dirt, wet or dry, and it has the room for self-cleaning as well. The K60 Scout comes in tube type and tube list options across a variety of sizes. There are also higher silica MS specs, which are tailor-made for mud and snow. One of the things that struck me is that this tread pattern here actually changes depending on which size of tire you choose. I think that really shows Heidenau's commitment to making the best possible tire for your bike, whether it's a 1200cc adventure tour or a smaller dual sport. All K60s are bias ply or bias belted, and all of them have a super heavy duty construction. A friend of mine recently rode across Canada on pavement on a fully loaded bike and got 20,000 kilometers off the rear. That's unheard of for such a competent off-roading tire. The Achilles heel of the K60 
is wet pavement. It does tend to hydroplane on this smooth center belt. But hey, if you know the weakness, just adjust your riding style accordingly, because this is an incredible tire in every other respect. I'm not even gonna say that this is my favorite pick of the video, because the K60 is my favorite tire on the motorcycling market right now. The logical comparison to the K60 Scout is Continental's TKC80. I'm bringing up this tire because it's the icon of the adventure world, but just to be clear, I'm not recommending this to anyone. The TKC80 has a sparse tread pattern, and it does work well off-road. In order to make it work on-road though, Continental gave us a very soft rubber compound that sticks to the pavement like a ginormous band-aid fix. The result is a tire that does very well in all types of terrain. But it buzzes like a bumblebee on the highway, and it burns itself flat in 8,000 kilometers or less. If you use this tire for its intended purpose, 40% on-road, 60% off-road, then it's okay. But that's a big if for anyone on an R1200 GS or Triumph Scrambler. I'll be the first to admit that I don't get that much dirt in my life. From where I live, just riding to the trailhead racks up more paved kilometers than I could cover in a few hours of off-roading. For me and my purposes, this is an expensive mistake. It looks cool, it would make my bike look cool, but I have a million reasons to buy a K60 Scout instead. My last pick is for dual sports under 650 cc's and it's the Kenda K760 Trackmaster 2. This guy is 90% badass for the dirt and 10% cheeky enough to say, yes officer, my tires are street legal. I'm not even gonna talk about the K760's behavior on the pavement because it's kind of beside the point. I can tolerate this tire for a few kilometers of pavement, but it's gonna whine at me the whole time about wanting to sink its teeth into something softer. Of course, it does that very well. Kenda calls this an intermediate to hard terrain tire. I'm going to say that it tends towards the intermediate side of that spectrum. The gaps between these center tread knobs is really quite large, and so they're going to sink in and scoop the soft stuff pretty well. The horizontal tread is really aggressive as well, so you can really lay this tire into the berm. Of course, you wouldn't want to pull the same trick on the pavement because these knobs are really flexible. As soon as you push your luck going into a corner, they might release on you. Anyway, the main reason I chose this tire is because it's cheap. An aggressive dirt tread like this is never going to last long on the road, so I just commit myself to changing it out pretty often. It's 60 or 70 bucks for a year. I don't really care that the K760 is only going to last me about 3,000 kilometers. It's a tube type tire with a soft sidewall, so changing it out is no big deal. And that's it for my favorite ADV and dual sport tires. Product links are right down there, and thank you very much for watching.